We can talk about global warming and perfume. Yes. Because we all need some joy too. We do need some joy. Okay. Here's the fan. <laughs> and all you need is Perfect. like a glass of rosé, the sen. Maybe wine after, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. In a moment. So let's discuss. Yes. Okay, so this is Erin. We met literally 10 or 11 months ago. Yeah. At Patricia Voto's very fancy event, kicking off her purse collaboration. It was a collaboration with Core. That was a beautiful bag collaboration, and it was in Clara, the restaurant in the New York Historical Society. Everything she does is like gold. Genius. I love it. I wear her stuff every time I possibly can. You I saw, saw you the wedding. Were, yeah, the wedding. She lets me borrow it. She's very, <sighs> I know. She's so nice. She's so nice. She looks beautiful in it. She's very nice to me. <laughs> but we met there 10 months ago and I was like, oh my gosh, who is this gal? She's so chic. Well, that's because Patricia dressed me for the evening. So that was helpful. That's probably why I looked chic. So that I was mean, a, look yeah. at you now though. So then I like looked you up. I was like, I need to know more about you and who you are. And then I fell even more in love because I'm like, here is Aww. this woman who does all this amazing PR work with all of these cool brands. The pillars of your company are sustainability and social impact. And you've somehow been able to marry things that matter with things that we just love, like fashion and restaurants and cool things. Yes, yeah. it's you know? basically like my brain. That's yeah. It's just a reflection of that. Not many people, I feel like, can marry all of the things that they love in this world into a job and then make money from that job and... So, like, that's very cool. So, break this down for me because you didn't even start in New York or L.A. You started in D.C. Well, I started my career in D.C. Um, I grew up in New Orleans. Who am I mm-hmm. talking to? Because you're going to give me direction as I'm yeah. a behind-the-camera person. I think sometimes we bring them in. We're Can like, hey. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So, you grew up in New I Orleans. I grew up in New Orleans. Which, love that goddamn city. It's the best. It really is such a magical city, which I didn't realize growing up there. I just thought everywhere was like New Orleans. Oh, yeah. That's no, not true. That's not true. Yes. No, I learned that the hard yeah. way when I went to school in Boston. Love Boston. It just wasn't the same vibe. Love very, Boston. very cold winters. Yes. And also <laughs> in New Orleans, they let you into bars to hear music from the time that you're nine. That was not happening to me in Boston when I was in college. So that was a hard and rude awakening. No, but growing up there, I, you know, the culture, the food, the music, so stunning. But I experienced my first hurricane when I was nine years old and learned about global warming at the same time and understood that we would lose all of this culture and all of this beauty to yeah. global warming. And so I became obsessed with climate change, which was not the coolest thing when no. I was like nine years old. Well, yeah. and that was very like early. It was like, early. It really wasn't a conversation when we were like kids. Not to age <laughs> like, myself. I didn't even have internet at the time. Like that yeah, wasn't that's a so, like, I was like Climate yeah. change wasn't really like a talked about thing. Obviously no. scientists were paying attention and they were aware, but it was not a conversation no, it, And it also wasn't cool in yeah. New Orleans. Like mm-hmm. I grew up, for anyone who watches football, it was like the Mannings went to my high school. Yeah, that, okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And we were there at the same time also to age me. Um, and God. so to talk about global warming, again, like it just wasn't something that was mainstream. And so I had to find a way to make it cool, compelling, accessible. Um, I can fast forward because my dream was to be an international climate negotiator or a fashion designer. And I was like, how can I what? marry the two things? And it didn't seem like it made sense. That and already the, solidified yeah. you as, like, the coolest person I've ever met. Yeah, like, but, like, I, I felt like fashion, sadly, I was like, oh, it's not serious. I need to do something that's more climate-related. Right. So I started in D.C., and I worked more in nonprofits for NRDC, which is a well-known nonprofit, um, and then also on Capitol Hill for the co-chair of the Global Warming Committee, which I know. When I, I read that, that was crazy to me. It was me. really cool. Let me tell you, there's no – I'm sorry, D.C. people. I love Washington. Yeah. Fashion is, like, not a thing the thing there. Not no, a little. No, and it Although, was... Although, I don't know. Kamala, you know, we got some okay. Joe Biden in there. <laughs> I'm talking about, like, I started when oh, it yeah. was, like, Bush era into oh. Obama. So, I was there when Obama won, and then, like, some fashion oh. came to the city, and it was yes. incredible. Yes, But what I'll say is, like, fashion wasn't really permitted on Capitol Hill. You were expected to wear, like, Ann Taylor Loft suits or things that were super boxy and not allowed to express yourself. And I did, because I worked for the congressman from Portland, Oregon. And I was like, <laughs> do you, whatever. We don't care. We all bike to work. So yeah. it was fine. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so I worked on climate legislation, which sadly didn't pass, and then moved to New York in 2010 and started working more in design. And I was like, why can't we use design and fashion to talk about climate? Get people to care about this, not from a policy perspective. So I essentially like married my interests. Which I mean, everyone was like, that's 
not going to ever work. No one cares. Well, okay. <laughs> Put a pin in that because I'm fascinated yeah. by that. But really quickly going back to the DC thing, I was reading in an article that you said that you saw people fighting for one law for like 10 years. You did your homework. Yeah. And you this. realized that like you could write an article and overnight have affected change, even just in mindset or whatever, but that's where it starts, right? Yeah. Like, that's crazy to think of the power of PR and that it can be used for such a positive thing. Totally. So just want to say that because I think that's very interesting. And then also coming back to, like, marrying these two things at a time again, like, sustainability is now something that we all talk about at the dinner table and is so massively, like, important to all of us, as it should be. But 10 years ago when you started this company, like, not really as buzzy of a thing. It was not buzzy. It was not cool to talk about sustainability. Um, I'm actually, I'm wearing Maura Hoffman, who I I just we, I just ordered something oh, from. Really? I was so sad that it was like the last day. And I was like, I gotta get something. She's gonna do other things. Yes, she so, has I mean, to do Mara other things. Mara is like, but I think about this because it was eight years ago we started working together as she was transitioning into talking about sustainability. Yeah. And it was really a moment of like, what are people going to think? Or I think there are probably some Beja sneakers up behind me. Um, we started working with Beja yeah. nine years ago. And again. I've been working with them now. Yeah, they've been around for 20 years. That's Next year's 20 years. insane. I also just like have to say, I think people think of sustainability and just think of the materials, but it's also how people build companies. Like, mm-hmm. how do you want to sustain your life? How do you want to live? Who do you want to work with? Who do you want to be surrounded by? The city is hard. The work that we do can be challenging. Yeah. So I think a lot about that, and I've loved working with them for almost a decade and have learned so much from them. Um, but it really was like a bit of an uphill battle in terms of getting people to be like, oh, cool, French sneakers, sustainable. It wasn't like they necessarily cared. It was about the design. And so I think it's like storytelling with different people. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because I I feel like I remember when people first started wearing it that I remember like 10 years ago. Yeah. And they're like, oh, those are so cool. But like the sustainability component was secondary at least yeah. as far as I knew or heard about, right? And so now it's interesting that when I would buy those, I'd be like, oh, they're really cool, and I love the fact that they're made from plastic bottles. Yeah. Right? No, those are, well, sometimes. They actually do, they're, no, that is true for some of them. Okay. They do use this bee mesh material that's made okay. out of recycled plastic bottles. Okay. And then we've also done work with Rothy's, which they make. Yes, yes. they do all. Recycled plastic bottles. Yes. Exactly, which Then the sustainability people get into the debate of like, well, should we even be using plastic at all? But it's interesting because Rothy's is like, I'd love to never use plastic again, but we have a plastic problem. I was just going to say, if we have it, it, we might as well use it. Use it. Reformat it. Exactly. And you're then not really washing your shoes as much, I don't think. Yeah. So you're not having the same micro plastic. I could go down a real far rabbit hole here, but yeah, I I can get really like nerdy about No, I love this. Yeah. That's what makes it so fun is to like hear somebody who has like such a particular like insight and you just know everything about it. I'm like, tell me all the things. And it's not only, you know, fashion and design, you have artists, you have media and tech, family and planning, restaurants, like Attaboy is such a cool little brand. But I like, love that. Love Attaboy. Go get a drink. I mean, that's where we'll go get a drink after this. Okay. So Attaboy, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll come see you. But like, Honestly, it's just people we want to work with and sustain. And for me, because I live in New York and I've lived here for 14 years now, it's like, who do I want to continue the city? Who do I believe in? And there are these little bars and restaurants or the places that people work to create yeah. and I want to support them. And so it's so beautiful because we have this whole ecosystem. Even with the dinner we met at, you know, Clara, the restaurant, that's our client. Yes. And we were able to pair them to do this beautiful thing together oh gosh, in it different was industries. the most beautiful yeah. evening. It was just such an interesting, well-orchestrated group of like, like-minded but also very different people totally i know suleika jawad's another one i have to talk about who we get yes. to work with tell me who her book um between two kingdoms if you haven't read it is no, so stunning to. it's a best-selling book okay. okay um and then she was in the oscar nominated documentary mm-hmm. american symphony okay which is about her and her partner john batiste the musician mm-hmm. and her battle with cancer is he's making the symphony but really it's a love story about art as this healing modality and also how I don't know it's just this beautiful love story they support one another but art supports them individually and collectively and so she was at that dinner that night and I just 
all of her work is just so exquisite. Yeah. So I get to work with her. I'm very you lucky. You get to work with everyone. Like, it's Not just everyone. A lot of really interesting. Yeah. I don't like, have enough hours in the day. I don't do know that. how you even have enough hours to, like, work <laughs> these people that you have on your list. The TED Prize that you... Oh, yeah. We've worked with TED for yeah. 13 years. Which is also wild. There was a woman that I was reading about who got the TED Prize. I'm forgetting her name, but did like the archaeology. Oh my god! The yes, from like Sarah the Sarah Parkak. She was story. able to identify like modern modern archaeological sites using satellite imagery. Yes. She's amazing. They really called her like the female Indiana Jones. Um, so I, I got get to, like that vibe. I got to work with her, Dr. Sylvia Earle, the deep sea explorer, uh, who's like I think she's like 84 now. And was, like, the first head of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So it's, like, it's just all these really cool women, too. I know. It's all the cool women out there. Who have to get dressed every day, by the Who way. Who have and I like, to get dressed every day. And <laughs> wear like lovely fashion. perfume. Yeah. We want to smell good. Fashion is. We need it all. Yeah. I, I don't, I, you know, it's really, I was thinking about this. I got kicked out of my environmental group in college. Why? <laughs> Because I cared too much about fashion, and it wasn't like I was wearing anything crazy. I was just yeah. like, "Oh, fashion's cool," and they're like, "There's no place for fashion and environmental movements." It, I think it was just like a different era, and uh -huh. I was like, "How can we wed these things?" Because yeah. in fashion, there was no place for environmentalism, and now it feels like, "Well, we need environmentalism in fashion because it's like the biggest oh waste, uh, right? Yeah, like, isn't it the biggest? The industry is so broken. I think if." If anybody wants to learn about the waste that's created, the Ore Foundation, which is a client of ours, okay. Ghana is home to the largest secondhand market. We send all of our textiles there. Wow. Things are washing on shore. I mean, the, the young women who have to pick up all of the textile waste that we send over, it's unbelievable. And our team has been over there multiple times. We brought journalists to go see it. But they're such an incredible resource as far as information. So, yeah, no, it's a huge contributor of waste and totally. companies aren't responsible for the waste they create even when I like look into one Zara store and I just think about all of those clothes that will never sell and that's just one store that's one store and just where does that go a lot of people would love to buy sustainable clothing but understandably so it's more expensive totally right? are there any brands that kind of less expensive obviously not Zara priced but like I think everyone has different price points they're comfortable with and what I would get say the is yeah get the sale <laughs> um I think Beja is pretty accessible I yes. have to say and same think, with Rothy's yes base range is amazing which is not just my client I'm also just like a super fan it's all behind us right oh, now okay there. Ooh. yeah I love them they are beloved we just went and visited all of their production facilities in Toulouse and in Paris oh and it was just astonishing to see how they make everything. I mean, it's hemp fields that's turned into the yarn, and I could go down another rabbit hole of information. But I would say look at Base Range. Also, Best okay. Year Collective, I love. Okay. Like, if you want to get pre-loved, secondhand, yes. go there. They're okay. B Corp, also French. Um, I would say also borrowing friends' clothes. Oh, Not yes. to be, like, sharing things, because we don't wear them all the time. No. So if you can get a garment that you can have be passed around. You were saying you borrow oh. from one of. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it is. It's one of those things where I personally, my ethos is just like, I buy less and spend a little bit yes. more. And I think that's why even in Paris or France that we both love so much, it's just the culture is different. It's like yeah. you just invest in maybe 10 nice pieces. In America, you're like, I have a wardrobe of 100 and they're all lesser quality. Totally. I'd rather have, yeah. And also knowing your personal style. Mm -hmm. Like just understanding that. I'm at this point where I'm like, I know if I'm going to wear something. Yes, me too. Or if I'm not sure, I have a rule. If it's over a certain price point, I walk away. Mm -hmm. And if I don't think about it, I was like, oh, it wasn't meant to be. Yes. If I'm still thinking about it, like if there's that like, oh shit, I didn't mm -hmm. buy this. Mm -hmm. It's meant to then be. And I wear it all the time. Exactly. When you hear statistics about the environment, it can be really depressing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's not good. So, no. But then when I look at your website and I'm like looking at all the brands that you represent, where sustainability, where climate change, where all these things are at the forefront of their mission, it gives me some hope. Yeah. So where do you live in that spectrum of like the world's ending and there's hope for the future? If I'm being really honest, yes. I think we're in a very bad place. Yeah. I also think that there's a lot of opportunity when you're in a bad place and I think I don't know. Maybe this is the other thing with having a kid. 
just do it. We have to do the work. And I think that there's a sad thing that's happened where just posting about something makes people feel like they're doing the yes. work or they're participating in the political system where it's like, no, do something. And this is where it's like, don't buy the fast fashion, like mm-hmm. from the littlest things mm-hmm. or, you know, only consume what you need compost. It's also not compost. about personal responsibility solely. Companies really need to change. So I think it's lobbying, changing how companies operate. I will say I'm grabbing. Can you hand me the book under there? Yes. Another client. This is Atmos. I'm, I'm, I literally didn't put these out here. It's just oh, this. this beautiful oh, book. Yes. Um, Willow, uh, who is the editor of editor-in-chief of um, Atmos. It's such a beautiful publication. And what I would say is finding joy in these spaces and beauty is so important yeah. because it is inspiring. So we want to yeah. do that while simultaneously talking about how fucked we are if we don't yes. pass climate legislation, if we don't keep um, temperatures under two degrees, you know, yeah, it's, no, I know. Yeah. Well, the election would... is important. And I know everyone is like, yes, different reasons for voting. But yes. We have a chance to vote in someone who will do more on climate and yes. someone who will Not. fuck the climate. So, yeah. Or just yeah. somebody who disregards the climate entirely yeah. as being an issue in any way, shape or form. Yeah. So, uh, I think joy, I saw there's a, I was at this conference last year with the meteor. I don't know if you know them. No. It was started by Cindy Levy, who okay. used to be the editor in chief of Glamour and she okay. writes, it's all about like reproductive health and democracy. It's really great. Yeah. They have a conference called meet the moment. Okay. You should come. Yeah. Not a client. I just think that they're phenomenal and yeah. it's going to be the Saturday after the election. But there was a woman who was speaking about democracy and I think she'd clerked for a Supreme Court justice and she was like, I dance. She's like, I see how fragile our democracy is. I see what the Supreme Court's doing. But I have a group of girlfriends we go and dance because I need joy too because I can't keep doing this work without the joy. And I think joy is actually table stakes. Otherwise, like, how do we keep doing this? We can't avoid the hard issues because they're hard and wear on us, but you have to find the joy in other moments to kind of balance it out. Totally. Okay. Mental health is something that I know that you talked about in like one of your interviews. And I was like, I would love to talk about that because walking is also something that I do for like my mental sanity. So even today was not like started off not in a great way. And I was like, I just need to get outside. And once I breathe that fresh air and I get my little limbs moving, it just kind of seeps out of you. You know, yes. and you like feel one with the earth and the world, and you're like, okay, it's okay. Um, that's something that's big for you. Huge. I like movement. I mean, you're movement. someone who, I mean, you're in front of the camera. Yeah. You have to know your body and like how things are working with the camera. Totally. I don't understand that in the same way. But movement, I feel like this is such a weird way to describe it. It's like when someone like charges their phone, they like plug it in or like sync the. That's my body and brain yes. sync when I'm moving. Yes. And I do my best thinking if. I am just in my body. Me too. So it has to like sort of disconnect and reset. I am actually embarrassed because I always run to music or a podcast. It's like always optimizing, which is awful though. Mm -hmm. And I went for my first run without music on Sunday. I had so many ideas. It was so fun. Yeah. At first I was like, well, I can't run. I don't have my headphones. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? Yes. I'm going to be, I'm going to just go. You know what's so interesting? Like we do become so tied to our phone and even if you are listening to a podcast, you're kind of like, okay, well I'm doing something good. I'm educating yeah. myself. But we forget that the, those quiet moments are sometimes like the best. Like yeah. last week when I was at that wedding, we didn't have Wi-Fi for four, mm-hmm. four days. But then after like the first like 30 minutes of being like, well, what am I going to do? Loved it. Yeah. Loved it. I was like, I have not not been online in, I don't know, years and years, you know, like at some point during the day. So it's just so nice to be able to like cleanse of all of this stuff. There's just so much information. It's too much. I also will say I work in a job, like a specific industry that requires me to be very online and had a situation over the weekend where I just like had to deal with something and there's no putting the phone down. And I have a kid, he's three and he sees that so I do try to be really careful and super present. Yep. Um, I think the technology and mental health thing, it's so interesting. There's the Jonathan Haidt book about kids. and yes. Yeah. Yeah. But so many people are talking about this. There's a really cool group called Mamas. It's Mothers Against Media Addiction, but it's social media. And they're working on legislation. But I think about mental health from that perspective, too. Where oh, I was my like, gosh. If we as adults struggle with this, like, how are kids are we being given these tools? I don't even want to call it a tool. These like addictive 
things supposed to manage that? So I I'm, I'm honestly trying. have so much empathy for kids growing oh up now. Like, do you worry about that with your son? Because I feel like on one hand, parents are like, I'm not going to give them any f- a phone or anything else until they're this age. But then it's like they go to school and they're around all of their friends who have those tools. Yeah. So then how do you balance them wanting to like not be left out, but also maintain that, you know, yeah, this is such, man, this is like a, a, a deeper question in many ways because and there's the easy thing where I say, I'm like, well, I'm not getting him a phone until he's 16. Right. And I do see that there are a lot of communities that are making packs about this where it's, Ooh, I won't do it until you do, or let's all wait until 16. Mm-hmm. I think that there are so many kids who came up without these restrictions in place because parents didn't know totally that this was going to be an issue. And now we know, um, That being said, like, I also see parents, there's so much strain on parents who aren't provided with support in this country, and so they'll hand their kids a phone to watch something, because I think they're exhausted. Oh, So I also think about this as, like, the infrastructure of our country, paid leave. So I'll say, like, our company also works on that, too. Like, our agency just works on things that are, like, making the world less shitty. Yes! Oh, my God. Is that your slogan? Trying to make yeah, the, day, the world had less it. shitty one day at a time. Yes. <laughs> like, I think we did unfucking the planet at one point, uh, but that doesn't feel quite right anymore. But like the paid leave oh, thing where I think yes. it was like, you go to other countries and you see the support that's provided and it's criminal that we don't do this. So it's I'm like, unbelievable. especially for the amount of money our country has. I know. Like, how do you keep it all together? How do you handle pressure? First of all, I've like, told, I'm like, no one has it all together. No. And also like, you asked how I do it all. I have a team. Anyone yes. who's like, I do it all alone, one, boring, two, yes. like, joyless, and three, yes. that's not possible. You can't do it alone. Yeah. I have such an awesome team. I have an amazing co-founder. I also have great friends yeah. who give me perspective and multi-generational friends. I have friends in, like, their 60s. Me and too. 70s. I yeah. love them kind yeah. of the most. Like, no, not knocking my friends who are my age or younger, but, like, people older than me, the wisdom and just the calmness that comes, like, um, sign me up. Giving fewer fucks, I think. Yes. They're just, like, they have a difference in, it's a different perspective. Mm-hmm. Like, they've kind of already, like, done this phase mm-hmm. and can guide you through that. Yeah. Or it's just, like, fun to hang out. I don't know. Yeah. I loved, yeah, I just went on vacation with my friend who's 65. Um, yeah, and that was great. Where'd you go on vacation? I went to Corsica. Oh, amazing. Yeah, it was really nice. Amazing. It was very nice. But she was, like, come along, and I went, I also recommend this if there are people with par- uh, with kids, I went alone, like no child, no partner. And I think, and then he went alone on his own thing. I insisted. I was like parody. Yes. Yes. And that was actually a vacation. Wait, I love that. Yeah. So people need to like still be themselves or I do. Maybe others don't. Well, I remember you saying something in another interview that said that when you were first becoming a mom, you were initially thinking about all the things that you were going to lose. Oh yeah. And not the things that you were going to like. I feel like I'm all what research. Am I sad? <laughs> but you were saying that, like, you were thinking about motherhood initially as the things that you would lose. But what do you think you have gained the most? And, like, yeah. how has your perspective shifted? Because, like, just saying that about vacation, you do have to change a lot about your lifestyle. Yeah. And at one point you were like, I think you said you liked to just know that you had your passport and you could leave it. I could just go. Yes. No, now you Obviously, can't because you have to get the shoes on the kid. It's like you're tethered more to yeah. this idea of home and this one place. Yeah. So, like, has that been an adjustment? And, like, how are you feeling? And I love it so much more than I ever expected. That's, like, the craziest thing. I also think that there's an interesting thing that happens. I've talked to a few friends about this where people will warn people pregnant people uh-huh. like get ready for your life to be over yes get ready to never sleep again and people said I, that to my sister and I was like why would you say that it's uh-huh. so bizarre to me or like why are you still out right now you're nine months pregnant yeah and I'm not like talking about like at a bar I was just going to like <laughs> I was raging no yeah, yeah, yeah but I like went to a party nine months pregnant I think yeah. I was at lunch and like, I just kind of kept going where I was like I don't know I feel fine but why wouldn't you? it almost what? felt like other people wanting to put restrictions uh-huh on me and I've had other friends say this so I've tried to provide this counter narrative of like actually just like think about what you need to set up your life so like to protect your mental health Mm -hmm. do you need to like have time with friends like maybe you don't get the bigger apartment save money for babysitters like have extra child care and support like what are the things that you value I would say it has been really expansive and I don't mean to sound like I don't know 
someone, my older friend, the one who's 65, she's like, oh, you're such a cliche now. So I was like, this is so, I love it. But um, it's like, just like the friends I've made, I'm seeing a different side of things. And even just like how to show up for people with kids or who I didn't show up for. And like, this makes me see parental leave in a different way. Yeah. Or like, even the ability to breastfeed and to provide and the fact that we don't like, it's, it's, it should be a foundational thing that we support new parents. Especially well, like, hundred percent. Yeah, I won't go down that rabbit hole. Well, How mad I am about policies, but no, a hundred percent. I feel like it's like every step along the way. It's like women's right to have an abortion if they want to. Yeah. Women who are struggling to get pregnant if that's like all they want in this world, and like the right to have access to IVF and like not worry that you're going to go to jail if you decide to discard, you know, some of the eggs, whatever it may be, and to like it's to then becoming a parent and like helping facilitate an easier go at it, you yeah, know? and not making it so goddamn hard. Yeah, I think it's criminal that we force people to have kids and have taken away the right to choose. I just like and that I hope encourages people to vote and to get involved I think I've always focused on climate issues and reproductive health wasn't my focus I think it was this foregone conclusion that we would always have it that we had won and then yeah I think it was a huge wake-up call for a lot of people when Roe was overturned I also just think we have to like as a country and society have more empathy for like women in whatever stage they're in it's hard being a gal sometimes you know so not sure how we got here but how has my life changed I have so much more I have far more understanding and empathy for people with kids and what they're going through and also I've just made so many friends this way and like I I see life a little bit differently I'm just having one because that's what I'm able to do yeah. And like, you know. One and done. I think one and done right. with a dog. Yes. He's cute. Where is the dog? I didn't bring the dog today. I was best. hoping to see the I dog. know the subway it was like hot and uh, commuting, but I do carry him in on the subway and he's my what, like what kind of pet do you have? He's he's a rescue from New Orleans. <laughs> His name is Gumbo. Gumbo! Yeah. Of course it's Gumbo. My mom helped me rescue him. Yeah, because she uh, works with a rescue in New Orleans. And oh so Oh my god, I yeah. love that so much. He's very sweet. This is joyful. This is so joyful. I love this. Thank Honestly, you. Honestly, I was like even having like a little bit of a day before this and I was like, you know, this is like the stuff that uplifts me. I was just uh, re-listening to Michelle Obama's podcast again. She's like, it's hard to hate up close. Yeah. And it's like the more, and obviously we don't ever hate each other, but I'm just saying like no. in real life, like it's just all about connection and bringing people together and sh- talking about shared experiences. We do live so much on our phones and digitally that we're becoming so removed from people and like that's why there's well not why but it's a part of like all the division happening in our country so yeah no having conversations in person uh it always feels good to me i'm like i grew up in the south where a lot of people did not think the way i thought i didn't think the way they thought i'd have conversations that were hard um about politics about you name it yeah. and I think it was really important and I I think it's a real I think it's a huge reason I do what I do where I'm like how do you reach people who might not agree with me shaming them fearing them like scaring fearing them yeah so, like driving yes. fear into people it's yeah. not going to be how people ultimately change I'm talking about no. with climate or anything else yeah I think it has to be an invitation to do it or an offering of like there is a path that yes. you can take and showing it as a hopeful thing wow what a good way to end That was a nice little and boom. (laughs) I spend a lot of time in Paris. Tell me some of your hot spots because I'm going to be there in like a couple days. And I know we're really going off topic, but I'm just. No, these are all of my favorite topics. La Bouche. So good. Really? Yeah. Okay. Delicious. I did a birthday. I think it was a bit mouth. Oh, Labouches. What's fly? I don't know what fly is. <laughs> like, why is that what came to my mind? Maybe because there's like a fly when you're... I have no idea. We're going to find out. Also, what if I'm wrong? No, you're I definitely not. Bushes. No, no, no. Yeah, that's like the... That's like a basic vocabulary. But I really no, yeah. highly recommend this okay, spot. It's delicious. Great. Right or left um, bank? Left. Great. I think it's in the 11. Do that. Okay. I will say my best tip is Lindsay Tremuda. This is my shout out to her. Okay. She is a travel writer, but she is like the ultimate food guide um, in Paris. Okay. You can actually go and download her PDF, which she updates all the time. And okay. she is one of the best writers. So brilliant. She oh, wrote the, the new Parisian, the new Paris. Like, 
dismantling the myth of the Parisian woman, looking at all the new businesses that are set up in Paris, and she's awesome. By, like really oh just start God. following her and take all of her tips does yeah. she write in French or English English okay married to a Frenchman she's been there for 20 years she is phenomenal I love you Lindsay <sighs> also I love Centre Commercial which is actually it's Beja's concept store and it's all sustainable brands oh made in France brands okay, you might have to send me a text I'll send you a list I was yeah. gonna say I need all of these 